Welcome to the More Business, More Life podcast. And today, uh, Giovanni Casals and I are going to talk about gratitude. This is a week of Thanksgiving here in the United States, but we want to go beyond that. We, we want to talk about gratitude on a deep level and then hopefully even give you some practices that you can take into your daily and weekly life over the course of the next year to find gratitude in a lot more ways and in very empowering ways uh, to help us, especially in these big changing times. So let's talk about gratitude, Giovanni. All right, Giovanni. So we're going to talk about gratitude. It's this uh, week in the, in the United States of America here that we call Thanksgiving. Um, and uh, we kind of, you know, definitely, uh, take to the gratitude side of that, you know, wherever you, you know, whatever you lie with this, this is a time to be thankful. And, um, and that's part of our company, right? Choose gratitude, create freedom. And it's taking that time to slow down enough to, to notice the, the things that we're grateful for. So, so important. Yeah. It's a, uh, I look at it in the, uh... I don't know if this is controversial or not. I look at it as a good and a, and a bad. Like the good that more people around this time of year start to have more gratitude and are thankful for things and and do th- more things for others. And at the same time, it's kind of sad that it's the only time that a lot of people think about it. Um, so I'm grateful that we have it. And I'm hopeful that we, we start doing more um, gratitude in our lives and, and kind of giving. Um, so I'm excited to talk about more about this. It is. Um, and there's been studies now out there that when people I'm, ex- I'm excited. And also I feel your sadness with that because, you know, it is um, uh, a bummer that we don't celebrate it all the time. And, and I, the, what I was going to get at is there's studies that show when people start with gratitude, their chemical makeup, they're actually happier. You're just actually happier because, you know, we are chemical beings, right? Like, you know, there's chemicals inside of us that make that, you know, make us happy, you know, dopamine and these different things that occur naturally in our, in our day to day. And that's why, you know, for me, I focus on my energy footprint. Um, You know, energy is important. It's often people think time is the most valuable thing. And I, I, I bring this up all the time Uh, to me, energy is because if, if i have all the time, but I don't have the energy, then what is life? And people always ask me like, how much caffeine do you have? Jeez, you have so much energy. And I don't drink caffeine. He doesn't. I'm uh, <laughs> yeah. I, if I do, it's not good. And usually it takes three days to recover because it affects me that much now because I've been, I grew up drinking coffee. I'm, you know, we're, we're Italian. Like, you know, if you go to Italy or you're around Italians, typically they're having a cafe after dinner and then still going to bed, which I could do. But it was actually diminishing my my energy level, which I didn't know. And what lifts my energy is is gratitude and wow moments, and you know, having the life uh, the things that make me happy. And it all starts with gratitude. And we even this year, uh, thanks to Leticia Reyes, she uh, she uh, suggests something. I've always had gratitude journals, and I've done these things. But now, as a family, we have a jar, and you probably saw it on our social media if you're following us. Uh, we, that they ju- you just put a piece of paper in there with your gratitude and just doing that just for a few minutes. If you, if you write down what you're most grateful for and you do this and you make a daily or a weekly habit out of it, watch your life. You'll actually start to remember what you're grateful for. And then it actually allows you to choose more life instead of being grumpy about the things you don't like, you sure. know? So we should take a moment right now and just say what we're grateful for. You know, um, you want me to go first? You go, you got it. (laughs) (laughs) I was already, the thing that I'm most grateful for um, is together, like the team. So my family team and my business team, um, I've just been reflecting a lot. I'm so grateful to have all of you, including you, Giovanni, in my life, uh, especially in 2020, because we had so much uh, changes and, you know, we can go farther and have more and, and, and not bear the burden, you know, like many years in my life, I carried everything myself. I thought I had to, and that was all my own illusion. 
you know, it was my own illusion. And so I'm grateful to have the people in my life that I have the relationships. I'm so deeply grateful uh, for them and, and for you. And that allows uh, for where we're going and our movement, you know, so I'm, I'm deeply grateful for that. Nice. Um, yeah, I would uh, reciprocate that and just uh, add the, that I'm grateful for all the experiences I've had in those last six years of moving to California. I think it's been the, the biggest growth I've, I've had as a human, just, uh, or as you like to say, removing all the, the layers or armor that I've built up over the years up until like about six years ago and like helping drop all that stuff and just opening my mind even more to the possibilities as a, uh, entrepreneur, business owner, um, the possibilities of just, I guess my potential, the possibilities of my potential. And like, I'm so grateful to be around you and to see all the stuff that you're doing with the, with uh, other entrepreneurs and, and how you're changing people's lives. And uh, it's, it's exciting to see and be a part of something like that. So very grateful and excited for what uh, the next few years or so uh, are bringing. It's going to be really exciting. And I would say what we're doing, you know, what we, uh, doing, yes. what we are doing as a team. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, um, it's amazing. Yeah. So I'm with you all the way and, and it's, and, and you know what gratitude brings growth. And that's why in our values, we have five, right. And we call it a gift. And actually that's back to you. Giovanni's the one that said that it's double G double F T gift. We just spell it funny. Right. So, but the two G's go together and the two F's go together. And the reason I say that is that ingratitude is growth, you know, and I, and this comes from a lot of the teachings from Carl Bukite. And he uh, really brought to, to me the, the words, and he's brought to many people, that you choose what you want in your life, you ask for it, and then you got to take what you get. And he means it quite literally, take what you get, because it's in that not taking. And this is when we're not happy with life. We're like, I didn't want this. I didn't order this. Why is this happening to me? And we reject it. And in that rejection, we actually stall our life. And through, so for me, like taking Carl's teaching and adding gratitude in, in a big way, and not that Carl excludes gratitude by all means, like he brings gratitude in, but I explicitly added those words in my mind. It's what helped me drive this forward is to choose what I want, take what I get, no matter what it is. If it's a result that I didn't want, then, and this comes back to the the second G growth, you know, that all life is learning. So I'm getting this feedback and it's like, oh, I didn't want that. Okay, great. Thank you for that. I'm grateful that I had this experience because now I don't want to choose that again. I'm going to choose something different and then I'm going to order it again. And then if I get what I want, then I can be grateful for that too, because now I can order that again. Say, okay, more, please bring more. But it's in the gratitude. I stopped stalling out my life. So many times in my life, I would get depressed even. Seriously, like actually depressed. Like I'm a loser. I can't tell you, uh, you know, like many people know my story. I lost over $4 million in my 20s. In my 20s, I felt like by the time I was in my early 30s, I felt like a complete loser. I'm like, what, what an idiot am I? What an idiot. Like, I can't believe it. Look how much I've lost. Look at all the things, mistakes I made. And I met my mentor at 31 and he said, how many people in their 20s lose $4 million? Yeah. And he taught me some things about gratitude and he's like, Look at how much gratitude you should have for all the things you got to learn. And, and now you're only, you're only 31. You know, I was like, at that time, I'm like, I'm 31 now. I'm 30. I'm in my 30s and I'm a screw up. And it was gratitude that changed my life. And that's why it's my tagline in the company here. Choose gratitude, create freedom. My freedom came from my gratitude, not from me beating myself up. So I, th- I don't know if we've talked about this before. What would you suggest um, someone do to start with gratitude? Um, like, how do you, how do you even start that? If you're, if you're somebody beating yourself up because you, whatever, you lost your job, you, your business is in the tank or personal life, whatever it is, how do, how does somebody go from f- those kinds of feelings to, to being grateful? Yeah. Um, it's a great question. There's many 
paths. Um, a couple, one, if you can remember how now is better than before. So sometimes reflecting at, and then you might say, someone might be listening to this and they're like, nothing's been worse than now. Like I've, uh, my life's never been this bad. Okay. Okay. Then that won't work. Right. So, but for some people they can actually look and say, oh, wow, I am further along than I was. Okay, great. So now we can reflect and be grateful for this moment when it's not better and it's horrible. And we've had moments, um, I've had many ups and downs in my life. Then, then, um, you know, a little shout out to one of my friends, uh, Tommy Voris. We came we, when him and I were hanging out a lot. Uh, we had the five minute wallow, and the five minute wallow was that if I'm having a bad moment, to not let that moment take my whole life. And what we did is we got a, a, a journal or a piece of paper, whatever you don't, or if you need to type on your phone, whatever you do, and you set a timer for five minutes and you write down everything you're pissed off about, everything that you're upset or sad, whatever, you just put your feelings down. Because I think part of it, Giovanni, is that people don't allow themselves to express their feelings. And then that bottled upness just feels trapped. And part of what I've learned from uh, some other people to name off, like Michael Singer, um, goes by Mickey Singer, the surrender experiment, the untethered soul, the thing about what is an untethered soul, a trapped soul is one that's stuck and not allowing emotion to pass. We are emotional beings and we've lived in a period of time that we're now we're emerging. Emotional intelligence is what is the game changer right now. We've come from a society that was bottling up emotions. Oh, it's not proper to cry, especially being a man, like you shouldn't be crying like that. Or even men and women, in it's like hey let's have tea you know it's tea time and they'll bottle up their emotions and be proper right and it could be anywhere in the world and we don't allow our emotions and i've seen this in many cultures and what i'm telling you is let them gush because uh as michael singer would say if you have a thorn in your side and it hurts and you can say okay it doesn't hurt if i don't touch it Okay, so then you could do it. But then if someone bumps into you or they try to give you a hug, ah, don't, don't, don't hug me. Now you're not going to hug, hug anyone. And then all oh, other people bumped into me by accident. So now I like live in this bubble and I walk around in this bubble so no one could touch that hurt part. And then uh, now I have to modify the doors in my house because I can't walk around with the bubble. So now you modify your house, you modify all these things. So we start adding on layers onto our life. This goes back to the layers, Giovanni, and trying to modify the world to fit around what we're dealing with instead of actually dealing with the core issue, which is we have a thorn in our side. And if we actually would just remove that, no matter how much it hurts, let that out, you know, cry if you have to and let it go. So back to the journal, and this could be different for all of you. This is why it's so important to have friends, which is another thing that we've went away from. You know, I, I mean, I remember, you know, it was a, kind of a joke, like in the 50s and 60s. And I think even up into the 80s, you know, a lot of guys would have bowling night. They would all go bowling. You know, those things I, I used to laugh about and, and make fun of that. But you know what? They had something because then they can go talk to their buddies and then and then and let some of that stuff out and we can call each other on our stuff and be like, hey, let you gotta let that go, or you know, whatever. And we we don't we don't have that. So, you know, for right now, especially with where we are and a lot of people still sheltering in place, grabbing the piece of paper, writing down how you feel, writing down all the things you are, and put it on a timer. Because if you and and if you go past five minutes, like at the beginning when I first started doing this, I would have more to write about. Then as I did this as a practice, there were times as I've, I've done this more and more that I would be done and I'd have like two minutes left and I'd be like, oh, now what do I do? So the whole idea to be very uh, straightforward, get a thing, set a timer for five minutes, write down all the things you're upset about. And then when the timer goes off, draw a line on the paper and say, now, what would I like? And then write that down, write that down, write down what would you, what would you like? So coming back to Carl Bukite, similar thing. I had done this five minute wall away before I met Carl, but Carl has it in a different way. He says, you know, a lot of life is OMG WTF. And then now what would I like? And so kind of five minute wallow is an overlap with that too, because that five minutes is writing down the, Oh my gosh, this just happened. Oh my gosh. Uh, what the WTF da, 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 da. You get all that pissed off now. And then you draw the line and you say, what would I like? What would I like? And then come to that. 
And then in the gratitude, the last parts of this is then write down what you're grateful for in that moment. And it might be just the breath that you're taking. It might be that you still have a house. It might be that you just bought groceries. You know, there's times in my life where I was putting fuel in my car and I had to stop. I couldn't even fill the tank so I could have enough money to buy food. I've been there. And then I've been other times where I'm like, oh, did they charge me? I don't see it. Oh yeah, there it is. I didn't notice that it came out of my account. So I've had both sides of that in life. And, and, uh, and I've had it both ways where I've had that wealth and then lost it. You know, so I've seen it both ways more than once in my life, unfortunately. And also I'm grateful for that, Giovanni, because I, at the time I wasn't, I'll tell you at the time I wasn't, but now I'm like, oh my gosh, I was needed to, I needed those lessons. I yeah. needed them. Yeah. I, I'm glad you mentioned, uh, oh, wow. is what Carl calls it the acronym uh that that's helped me a lot the so it's o o m g w t f okay and i think that's the biggest part uh people kind of brush over is the okay um and it's the okay of like it's like okay it happened like now what like what and then what would i like like those are the two big people because everybody goes through right everybody goes through omg automatically we go through what the wtf Um, and then a lot of people just skip the last two, either saying, okay, and they just hold on to it and, or they don't ask what they would like instead. And those are two very key things. And when I first learned about that, man, I was going around like telling everybody who would listen to me, like, Hey, do you know this new acronym? I just learned. So let me tell you about this. And like it just because like it, it helped me because, um, yeah, I would go, and it, and it's both for both what we perceive as negative and good things, right? We go through that that those four stages, no matter what, or what we go the first two stages, but learning the the second two, the okay and what would I like, um, those are are huge. And I, I would agree with you that um, just starting with something like small, even just being like, uh, there's many times when I wake up, I do my gratitude kind of weird, like I'm kind of I call it the in between where you're not fully awake, but you're not really sleeping, like you're aware, but you're still like, I call yeah. it the in between. And so a lot of times when I'm in the in between, I, uh, I just say, I'm like, I'm like, thank you for this bed. Thank you for like having blanket, right? Thank you for like this shelter. And it's because sometimes, you know, we, we live, you know, we live in America, we have so much stuff and we forget, like, how blessed and, and, um, how blessed we are to have all of these things. Um, I was just listening to a podcast um, today. Um, this uh, woman, it was an interview of a woman who was a, a North Korea defector. And like she's, she left when she was, she escaped when she was 13. And then she's just talking about, um, and she's now a, like a humanitarian um, and human rights activist and everything. And she's like telling a story of like how they lived um, like what happened to her once she left, like she said, she didn't leave to become like a, a protester or anything. Like she left cause she was starving. She was hungry and she was close to the, the border of China and she could see the lights and she's like, maybe I can just get over there. We can eat. Like I have some food. And then like the story that she, um, from once she actually escaped to like where she, you know, like then she became like a slave and she was, a, she was a virgin. So like she sold was sold because for a, like a higher dollar, which I think she said she got, she was sold for like $200 or something like that. Like crazy. And like her mom was sold for like $65. It was like, but it's insane. Like it went from like, she was sold like sex trafficking. And then she was bought by a couple of different people. And then she made her way out of China to uh, like South Korea and then to like a few other countries and then to the United States. And like, she's just talking about like all this hardships and, it's in, it's insane to think about like uh um now I get back to what I was coming from but she yeah. like she she now she like she's like I I forgave the person who like raped her like the first like person like he's like he actually had some went to jail for something else or whatever and she like ended up helping him like when like like it was just mind blowing how like and she had like I wouldn't say it was gratitude, but she didn't like have this grudge or anything like that. Like she's like let all of that go, and she's like, like I'm she's like living now and like just yeah. trying to spread the word and 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 get people to be aware of it. Um, but it's like thinking of stuff like my life is nowhere near that um, 
gone through that much pain or trauma or anything, anything like that, nothing, you know? And it's just, I, I, when I hear stories like that, or I look at things, I'm just like, wow, I really have a really, I have an amazing, I have an amazing life. I'm not where like I want to be right. You know, it, right, but right. it's like, but like, I have a really good life and like, I, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that I can stop and, and see that and be like, wow, I'm, I'm grateful that we have electricity. I'm grateful that I can do a zoom call. I'm grateful that I have a, a like, it's just like this, the smallest thing. And even sometimes I'm like, I'm just grateful. I have fresh air to breathe. Like, yeah. you know, like, especially here in California, like that the yeah. smoke is gone from the fires and we can go out and breathe. And, and, you know, this come the, the word for me and thanks for bringing all this up because it is slowing down that helps the gratitude because you and I have traveled to South America too. And then people will spend hours in gratitude hours, you know, like, uh, you know, and you and I, we uh, had some gratitude ceremonies and had some cacao ceremonies and where we slow down. And I've been actually bringing that into my daily life because, you know, even how just touching on, you just said, you know, you're, you're not where you want to be and it's okay to keep dreaming. And it really is, but we have to live in the the present and, you know, based on language too, I don't believe there's any coincidence that the present state is a present and it's spelled just the same as a gift. This moment that we have right now that you and I are having on this podcast that, that we get to have with our families after this, the, these moments that we get to have holding that because when we uh, regret the past or we focus on that, like what power she gave herself by letting go of all those grudges, by being mad at people that have assaulted her and in horrible traumatic ways, like people can hold that and people do, they hold that like cancer in their lives for the rest of their lives. And they end up harming themselves when we can actually forgive and forget which is hard. It's not easy to do for, for many of us, but we're actually losing our own personal power. We're losing our own thing. And this is that whole letting go, right? So if we can let go of that, then I can be present now. And then, and then you also could do the opposite. You could be a big dreamer, which I tend to be. And we could spend so much time in the future thinking, I have to bring ourselves back to this moment yeah. because this is where the point of most power is. Um, and uh, as Robert Diltz would have, would say is that, that this is the moment right now. Many other people have said it too, but that uh, this, this, this moment right now. And then, so bringing it to a tactical thing, what I've been doing, Giovanni is like uh, it really came to cacao, like um, and uh, Jonas from Firefly chocolate really having me slow down and, and consume chocolate in a different way, because that's been an overindulgence. And I'm talking about no sugar, like, just the cacao and it's it's a bit bitter mm -hmm. and but it's so it slows you down and you really bring your gratitude and your awareness of the food and so now what i've done is i've brought that to my meal times so when i eat now i pause and i you know because even in life too we're like go 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 and being here in silicon valley growing up i would eat a lot of meals fast and get right to the next task and now i'm forcing myself every meal that i eat every and i have my leftover cup of uh, cacao right here from earlier this afternoon and i um I'm basically, uh, I'm going to scrape that out with the spoon, by the way, after this podcast, that's why that spoon's there. I'll save you the scraping sound, but I, um, I sit there and you know what I do, Giovanni? I like, um, I bring myself to the land. So I'm grateful for the land that whatever I'm eating grew off of. Um, I'm thankful for the water that fed it. I'm thankful for, I picture the sun. I'm grateful for that because without those things, we wouldn't have the food that we consume. Then I see, I see the farmers that created that. And some of them, if you eat local, you'll know your farmer. So then I even picture them and I'm like, thank you. Thank you for growing this. Then I see the transportation, the, the trucks that took it to the market that I, that, that my family bought it from. And I think the people at the market for putting that food uh, in place so that we can have it uh, and doing all that work. And then, and then uh, if my wife had prepared the food or my kids or, or, you know, then I thank them for preparing the food. And I, I picture all this in my mind and then I'm putting all that energy and, you know, I could feel the energy in my palms around that food and just putting all that love. And, and then, and then when I consume it, I slow down you know, so much of digestion is in our mouth and I never knew that. And so even learning that and slowing down and tasting the food, because sometimes I would chew so fast and swallow just to get that, uh, the, the food. So I would feel hungry, but now I'm, and then I even eat less because I'm allowing the digestion to happen and I'm feeling full and, 
and I'm really letting this amazing energy into my body and bringing all that gratitude because this is life. And then just to your point, Giovanni, like how grateful I am to sit at a table and eat a warm meal or have these things that other people uh, may not have the ability to have. And, and there's so much gratitude in that. And then just noticing that in the small things. So this comes back to, I think your original question is like, how do you do this when things could be so bad? Bring yourself back to the essence of life and, and, and look at what's around us. You know, it's uh, it, it finding that gratitude. And now when things are hard, I can find the gratitude quicker. When you're in a storm, you know, most of the time I find that the presence, the gifts that come out of that are, are bigger than when everything's calm. And so instead of looking at the storm and being mad at the storm, start looking for the president that's in that, look for the gift that's in that storm and start finding those things and ask yourself, what do you have to be grateful for? That could be the simple answer right there. So you're, you're stuck. What do I have to be grateful for? And keep asking yourself that until you have an answer, you know? Um, And if you really can't find an answer, then ask somebody who's near you, find someone uh, who's, who's, who's near you. And if, and if you're really, really alone, then reach out to anyone if you can, because, you know, as humans, we want to connect more than people think. So, you know, call and, and I know a lot of people are in tough spaces with, with, with 2020, like, you know, reach out, reach out to us. I give you permission to call our company, to message us on social media, just say, Hey, I'm not feeling good. And, uh, we're here for you. We're, we're here for you. Nice. Yeah. 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 Hopefully that gives some ideas, Giovanni. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I think, you know, there's just so much, uh, there's just so much information out there for everybody. And like, it's always just kind of good just to get to, to know what somebody's doing, who's been successful, successful at it. Right. Like, uh, success is different for everybody, but like, it's just good to just to know because sometimes people just they're just stuck, right? They just they don't know the first step to take, right? And every sometimes even something as we think as little as gratitude can be a huge barrier or a wall. Like I don't know how to be grateful for anything, you know. So just knowing just to, somewhere to start, you know, one foot in front of the other kind of a thing is great. If your heart is beating and you're breathing, yeah. start there. Yeah. Be grateful. Start being grateful for your body. Be grateful for your heart. Even if you're having heart trouble or you're having medical issues right now, start being grateful for your body and I'll bet you, you'll start healing faster. So start with that. And as we go into this week, I hope you get to cherish the time that you have with your own life, with the family members. And if you're not there with family and you're doing it on Zoom, be grateful, like Giovanni said, that we have computers, that we can call our family. You know, my family came from Italy um, three generations ago and some of our family members never got to see their mom again, you know, and never got to really communicate with them besides with some letters, you know, like how grateful we are for technology that we could pick up the phone and I can talk to my cousins that are still in Italy and I can talk to people in Australia right now. And I can, you know, be here on this podcast, uh, remotely with you, Giovanni. So just find those things to be grateful for. And then to Giovanni's point, Let's encourage everyone to use this as a thing to start now. It's never too late. Start now. Start making a weekly, uh, at least a weekly. Like if every Sunday or every Monday, just pick a day. And then if you write down the thing that you're most grateful for and going to Leticia Reyes uh, jar, get a mason jar or anything uh, and put that the one thing a week, just do it once a week, one thing you're grateful for, put it in the jar and then uh, 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 and if and it's start any time now, and then basically after at a year, pull them all out. And so we're going to do it. My family are going to do it on the winter solstice. So on December twenty first, that's the winter. That's the the shortest day of the year, which is a time to reflect. Right, it gets dark sooner. Let's slow down. The winter months are for us in the northern hemisphere. It's a time to slow down, to reflect, use that time to reflect on those things. And even if you're starting now, okay, great, start now. And then next December 20, uh, whatever it is, it's usually around the 21st, 22nd, somewhere around the winter solstice. Then um, actually, I think I have it here. 
the winter solstice is on the 21st again next year. I think we were just looking at that because I'm actually planning that as a little holiday for my family. And then we're going to open that jar again and we're going to read what we, and it, I, I guarantee you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I was grateful for that. Oh, I forgot about that. Think how much you're going to go into the holidays with remembering your whole year of gratitude. So I just want to impress upon you and thank you, Leticia from uh, 109. Uh, they, you know, uh, I've had a lot of different gratitude exercises, but this has been really fun. And my daughter is like excited. She's like, dad, when do we get to read them? When do we get to read them? I'm like, like December 21st. Present. Yeah. <laughs> December. And it, yeah. And she's excited about the ding, the jar, right? And you could think, Hey, it's just a jar with paper in it, you know, but, and it is, but there's so much love in that jar. No wonder she's gravitating towards this probably beaming energy out of it. So, so that's what my suggestion would be of where to, where to start Giovanni. Sounds good, man. Awesome. Okay. Well, this has been an awesome episode and we'll have a few more of these. We're going to start peppering these in with uh, Giovanni and I, and some of our team members. So look forward to those episodes, have an amazing uh, Thanksgiving and wherever you are in the world, be grateful. As we say, choose gratitude and create freedom. We'll see you on the next episode. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for listening to the More Business, More Life podcast. I hope you got value. And if you did, we have so many more things for you at stevenopleton.com. You'll be able to connect with us on social media. We are active. You can ask us questions. And then on top of that, I want to give you a really big gift. And it truly is. We want to give so much value. We have an offering. It's a program called Clear Path to Customers. It's the same way that we attract wow clients and only working with the right people, the people we want to. And it's transformed my business into millions more in revenue with the right people and my clients. And we're doing it absolutely free. So you can go to stevenopleton.com and grab that. You just got to put, put in your information and we'll send it to you promptly. And that again is on stevenopleton.com. Dot com. I look forward to having you on the next show. Until then, remember, choose gratitude and create freedom.